This is Tansa, everyone. I'm Dallas Wapash, and we're back with Create to Learn Round 2. I've got another four videos here today to introduce you to an exciting art form inside of the Unity game engine. And that art form, my friends, is augmented reality. In this series, we're going to learn how to augment something on a flat surface. We're going to then decorate our augmentations to make it look cool. And then we're also going to add an invisible button that does something for us. The nature of what that button does can be totally up to you. We'll be doing all of this on the computer, but then we'll eventually get this thing we've made and put it onto our phones locally. Android smartphones. So that is totally exciting, and I couldn't have done it alone. This video series is part of a larger initiative from Create to Learn, a partnership between Taking It Global and Imaginative. So follow Create to Learn's Instagram or the hashtag Create to Learn on social media to find more series that teach youth digital skills. This series in particular was produced in Brandon, Manitoba on Treaty 2 territory. The land here is the traditional lands of the Cree, OG Cree, Anishinaabe, Dakota, and Dene peoples. It's also the homeland of the Métis Nation. This treaty was made in 1871, and you can learn even more by visiting trcm.ca. So alright, let's get learning. In this part, we're going to take a deep dive in installing Unity and Vuforia through their own websites. We'll then once again familiarize ourselves with Unity's user interface and downloading Vuforia through the Asset Store. We'll then find a flat picture to augment and get closer to testing. So here's what you'll need. One to three flat images. This could be a playing card, the top face of a box, or just an image that is displayed from a smartphone. Whatever the case, the design of the flat image should have a lot of contrasting details and decently vibrant colors. So blurry photos won't work as well as, say, uh, the elaborate clean designs of playing cards. And if you have the means, you could even make your own designs and print them out. Whatever flat surface you're using, you will need a digital copy of it. So if you find a playing card to use, be prepared to take a picture of it from your phone and having some way of accessing that picture from your computer. We'll be covering more of that later. You'll also need an email to register with Unity and Vuforia. Everything we're using is free, but needs a license to go along with an email address. And finally, to test on our computers, we'll need both a computer and a webcam to be sort of our eyes from the Unity game engine. If you need time to get these ready, feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, let's get right into it. So first, I'm going to download Unity Hub. I'm accessing the internet through Google Chrome, so at the top search bar, I'm looking up Unity Hub because it functions as a search bar. The result I click on is download-unity. This takes me straight to their download page. So I'm going to click on this green Download Unity Hub button. Let this fully download, then click on it to run. Since I already have it installed though, I'm just going to cancel this download. When one opens Unity Hub, this is what they'll usually see. A box with many things to click on. Exciting! So to the left I see Projects, Learn, Community, and Install. Learn is where I can look up very specific Unity tutorials that teach excellent topics uh, that could be applied to one's own video games. They often come with 3D models and code to use so that you can just really focus on learning. Uh, community provides a ton of links to help you access Unity's community, whether that be to specific people on forums or through specific areas online to get all of your Unity game engine information. Installs shows all of the versions of Unity you have currently installed on your computer. This will likely be blank for you if this is your first time. You can add more versions though by clicking on the blue add button and doing so prompts you with a box that asks the version you'd like to use. For this series, I'm getting Unity 2020.1. I click next in the bottom right corner and then I'm asked what modules I'd like to install. Modules allow me to build my video game or my app to a lot of different places like websites, consoles, TVs, or computers. Uh, but for this series, I'm getting Android uh, because I want to eventually put these augmentations onto my phone. And once again, I click next and get taken to an agreement to agree to. I scroll down, click accept, and click done to begin my download. Uh, okay, I gotta clear up some space first. 
All right, so now that that's taken care of, I'm now letting Unity install, and in the meantime, I'm going to get my license for Vuforia. Once again on Google Chrome, I'm going to search for Vuforia Developer. The link I want to click on is called Vuforia Developer Portal. This website gives all the newest information behind Vuforia software, and these are the people who make the AR possible inside of Unity. At least, they're just one of the people who do. I like them because at the moment, they allow me to prototype relatively fast compared to others. At the top of the website, I want to click Register. I'll then fill out this information and expect an email from them to verify my new account. I made a new email account just to show what this looks like. After I submit the form, I await my confirmation email. You'll get two of these. One is just a record agreement and the other is for your actual online account. Once verifying your online account through email, back on Vuforia's developer portal, log in to your new account. When you're logged in, you should be taken right to the develop page on their website. You'll see the license manager page, which is where you'll get to keep all of your licenses with Vuforia. For this series, we're only going to have one though, so click on get development key and you'll be taken to a page that gives you specifics on the license. It tells us the license is free, is allowed 1,000 recognitions per month, a thousand different images to track, and tells us that we'll get a watermark over our webcam when prototyping. Once I agree, I then see a large license key that I'll need for later. This huge gray paragraph of random numbers and letters. Now that I see this, I'm going to head back to Unity Hub. It should be done installing by now. We need to make a Unity ID in order to use Unity. So back at Unity Hub, I see a little person icon in the top right corner. I'm going to click it and then on sign in. Magically, I'm prompted to sign in, and if you need to make a new account, you can click on create one that's displayed in tiny blue text or create an account through Google or Facebook. Once I'm logged in, the little person changes into my initials. Hooray! When we click on the initials, we have more options to choose from. I'm going to select manage license. This will take you to a part of Unity Hub that focuses on your active license. Since mine is already active, I'm just going to renew it by clicking on Activate New License. I'll specify that this is for a personal account and that I'm not using the engine in a professional capacity. It's relatively quick, painless, and more importantly, free. Now we can use Unity for our own purposes. So back in Unity Hub, let's go to the Project tab on the left side of the screen. The project tab shows us all of our projects made with Unity right now. This area might be empty for you, but for me, I have around a dozen or so projects. So we can create a new one with the blue button near the top right. So click on it, and then let's fill out our project's information and make sure the 3D template is chosen. A cat is jumping around the room. Okay, cool. Um, click on create and our new project will be made. Unity will take some time to boot up for the first time, but once it does, uh, I'll be explaining everything we see on screen as we use them, so it's a bit easier to understand. At the very top of the screen, make sure your version is Unity 2020.1 or higher. For now, near the top center of the screen, click on Asset Store will then be prompted to search online via a web browser like Google Chrome or Internet Explorer and search for Vuforia at the top of their website. Once we do so, we see that there's a ton of Vuforia assets to download, a lot of them. The one we want, though, is by the company PTC and is titled Vuforia Engine. So click on this asset and you'll be taken to its store page. Once there, you can read all of the information on this asset, but really, we're just here to add it to our own list of assets. So we click on Add to My Assets and agree to their terms. A window will pop up on the website asking if you're ready to take this back to Unity, and I do, so I click on the button. This then takes me back to Unity and adds a new window called Package Manager. 
If you wanted to find this on your own, click on Window near the top center of the screen and search for Package Manager. Otherwise, inside of the Package Manager, ensure you're viewing Bluforia Engine and click on Import. Add any dependencies this asset needs and import all of the files you're prompted with. If you're asked to update like I am, go ahead, do so. Everything will take some time to download, but once it does, we see that a bunch of folders were added to the bottom of the screen. This is happening in our Project tab, where all of the files for our video game are installed. This is where we'll store our pictures, art, music, animations, and code. To be sure that everything installed properly, go to Scene Hierarchy, that blank rectangle to the left of the screen, and in it, we should only see a directional light and a main camera. This camera and light are two game objects that exist somewhere within our level, or app. We want to add another game object to learn some things. So right click, and we already see that Vuforia engine is there, but we're going to go over some shortcuts first. So hover over 3D objects and create a cube. A white cube should appear in our scene window. The scene window shows our level in a way that allows us to move, rotate, and scale objects inside of our level. We can still make changes here, and so I want to tell you some good shortcuts that are good to know inside of Unity. First one is W, which allows you to move your game object using three different arrows. E allows you to rotate your game object pretty much the same way. Pressing Ctrl and Z on your keyboard allows you to undo any mistakes or happy accidents that you made along the way. And finally, R allows you to scale your game object in terms of width, height, and depth. But there's also shortcuts that help you move around your level. So clicking on your mouse wheel allows you to pan around the game level, sort of like clicking and dragging on your phone. The mouse wheel can be used to zoom in and out of the level. Uh, clicking and dragging can create a highlight box. This highlight box can be used to select multiple game objects at a time so that you could move, scale, or rotate them all at the same time. Holding Alt on your keyboard and clicking in the scene window allows you to pan around a specific point, which is handy for getting different perspectives on a game object. And finally, if you're lost and can't find a specific game object that you're looking for, select the game object from the scene hierarchy on the left and press F once you're hovered over the scene window and that can help you find your lost game object, which is really, really helpful. With that out of the way, we're one step closer to learning Unity, which is awesome. So now we're gonna rename our cube. In the scene hierarchy, right click on your cube and select rename. Give the cube whichever name you're looking for. I'm going to rename my cube for testing purposes, and it's my friend. Now we need to check on Vuforia's assets that we downloaded here. Inside of the Resources folder, shown in the Project tab at the bottom of the screen, click on Vuforia Configuration. This will show some text inside of the Inspector tab on the right. The Inspector tab shows us all of the information pertaining to our game objects and files. It even allows us to make changes to a game object or file, so it's pretty rad in that sense. The text we see in the Inspector gives us a place to put our license from, like, way earlier. So, let's head back to the Vuforia Developer site and get it. I'll click on this paragraph to copy the license, and back in Unity, I'll press Ctrl and V at the same time to paste it. So nice, that filled up a lot of space. Finally, we're getting closer to the interesting stuff. If we scroll down in the inspector, we can change how many images we want to be able to track at once. At most, I'd only use three just for prototyping purposes, and for the highest quality, I'm also going to change my camera device mode to optimize quality. I'll also check off load object targets on detection, and train targets continuous search to help out with our prototype. Lastly, scroll down to play mode and ensure that webcam is selected and that the camera device is currently set to the webcam that you want to use for prototyping. So now, let's track an image for our prototype. Right click inside of the scene hierarchy at the left of the screen and from the list that shows, you should see Vuforia engine listed here. Hover over it and create an image target. Now, we need an actual image to use. I want to prototype using three different flat surfaces to see which has the best time being tracked by my webcam. To see what photo is really easier to track. I'm testing out a Dungeons and Dragons playing card, even though I've never really played the game, a Christmas card, and an awesome tin box used for storing pencils and pens. I laid all of these items over my bed and used my smartphone's camera to take pictures of them. 
I did my best to avoid glare over my image, as those glares can show up really bright on pictures, really bright white blobs, and that can really obstruct the, the thing that you're trying to track with the webcam. It can just make things a lot harder for you. So once I took my pictures, I used my smartphone's emailing app to send the pictures to my own email address. Then I could download these photos onto my computer by logging into my email from there. I could have used a USB cord to just transfer these images straight to my computer from my phone, but I like making things complicated this way. Once I downloaded my pictures onto my computer, I found them in my downloads folder and clicked and dragged them into my project window at the bottom of Unity. So now that I see my photos are here, we're going to actually get them working. So from the image target we created, click on it in the scene hierarchy on the left, and then in the inspector tab, I want to be able to use one of the photos I have. Right beside image, there will be a blank square to set this picture up. Click on it, and you should see a large list of photos to potentially use. These came from when we downloaded Buforia. Since I named my photo, I can simply just type its name here and easily find it that way. I'll set up the Christmas card first to demonstrate. We can see our image show up in the scene window, but just barely. Uh, under the nearby advanced tab, I can specify a width for my image, and this size is typically done in centimeters. This is only really important though in the event that you're wanting to track multiple images at once. Just so Unity has some sort of scale to reference in between different sized images that you're using. So I believe my card is about 6 centimeters wide. And with that done, I'm going to Control and D on my keyboard to duplicate this game object. And I'm going to set up my other two photos. Alrighty, so my camera battery died, uh, so I had to let that recharge and obviously like things have changed in my room. I got this, uh, that's pretty much it. So anyways, uh, while setting up my new photos, I made sure to change the width that was specified for each since in the physical world, these things are different sizes. So now that all are set up, I'm going to begin getting prototyping graphics over them. Something to show us that the augmentation is actually working. For now, I'm just going to use basic shapes that Unity offers. If this is your first time using Unity, I challenge you to get familiar with all of the keyboard shortcuts discussed in the video thus far. I'm going to overlay shapes above all three of my images here. So there's a lot of shapes here right now, so I'm going to rename my image targets once again by right clicking and selecting rename. This is really just for myself so that I can keep things organized. Alright, so in augmented reality, there's a thing that's being augmented. In this case, it's a bunch of cards or the top of a pencil box, and to sell the effect, if that card moves farther away, my augmentation needs to move farther away too. But right now, none of our game objects are grouped together, so if I move a card, nothing will follow it. And to change this, I need to parent the basic shapes onto the cards. The way to do this is by selecting your basic shapes in the scene hierarchy on the left, and dragging them onto your image target game object. So it's like a click and drag function. You can tell this was successful because of the triangle to the left of my image target. Clicking on this triangle will drop down all of its children. So now, wherever the parent moves, so too do the children. So let's test them out and see which one tracks best. There's a lot of factors at play here. The quality of my webcam, the size of the card I'm tracking, and the lighting. Through testing, I can see that the tin box has the easiest time being tracked. I assume this is because of how big it is, but also because the creatures depicted on it pop off against the green background. So this tin box is what I'll continue prototyping with. So awesome, we made a lot of progress here. We got installs and licensing out of the way, so that next time, we can focus purely on decorating our augmentation. See you then!